name's Craig Harding. What I'm doing is opening up a restaurant. This has been the culmination of 10 years of my life. Failure's not an option. You know, if it doesn't work, we lose it all. On the last episode, I put together a team of totally untrained amateurs. We demoed the old coffee time and paid the price. I went into the country to get a lesson in foraging by Grant from the Hoof. Back in the city, we gave the old coffee shop a facelift. Down the street, the country came to the city for the Trinity Bellwoods Farmer's Market, where I got to do some research for the Campagnolo menu. restaurants that allow the guest to basically get a front row seat mm -hmm. to all the action here in the kitchen, right? And this is something that I wanted from the beginning. I always knew, like I always knew that when I was stuck toiling away in a hot kitchen in the back, that when I had my own place, I would never want to just sort of be stuck there. And I'd want to be out, I want to be enjoying the atmosphere, I'd want to talk to the guests. So if that, you know, we'll have four seats here. <laughs> You could have two couples coming up here and enjoying, you know, talking, interacting, possibly customizing their menu, having the chance to taste things. If I'm cooking, uh, like if I'm making a risotto for a table and I got a little extra, you know what, they're gonna get a taste and try it out. That's part of the experience. Like literally, you know, think about it. All, all these services I am, I'm gonna go back from the stove to the top, to the stove to the top. I'm gonna wear the tiles out, but it's coming. Another feature of the restaurant that has to be right is the bar. It's a real focal point and we spent a lot of time and effort, not to mention cash, to get it just right. It's a deep bar. Unfortunately, the custom bar isn't the only thing cash is going into. My money is getting extremely tight. I am, you know, I've always have been overcredited here, but, but now that uh, now that we're waiting for the house refinance to come through, it, it's, it's got to happen this week because I've been holding off paying my suppliers and that's something you don't want to do. There was a bit of light at the end of the tunnel, or at least near the end of Bellwoods Avenue, where our house renovation was finally finished. Hey buddy. Done. We're done, yeah, we moved in. Sick. Good to see you, man. Come on, have, have a look. This is our suite. Uh, so this is our living room. We got the ceiling pendant and the light fixture. Like it really, really rounds out this room with the with the crown molding and the coffered ceiling. A nice cooking area, nice working area. So when we entertain, we've got our table here. Uh, I can be standing here cooking and chopping on this island. And what it does is it allows me to focus on the restaurant. I can walk over there. I can deal with it because if I want to open for October thirty first, it gives me six weeks. But it's not a lot of time when you think about it which is why there's eight, nine people working there today. Because I'm trying to get all the trades in there and get moving. But it's stress. So I, I left one type of stress for the next level of stress, you know? As usual, when one problem gets resolved, another one rears its ugly head. I'm in a murder rob. This time, it's the house refinancing, which I desperately oh. need to finish the restaurant. We got because they want to see they want to see pay stubs, they want to see uh, records of employment, current. Because My buddy and one-time partner Rob was MIA when I needed a signature for a document. They're hell-bent on seeing documents for my measly little $30,000 salary. Then they call Rob and, and they, want, they want to see... Uh, it's 11.30 and he's the executive chef. What do you think okay, he's doing? Okay. Making pasta? He's drinking, I'm sure. He's having a glass of wine. Success! <laughs> When it comes to financing an operation like this, nothing is too trivial. So off I went to cash in my empty beer bottles. I don't mind hoofing it in this new neighborhood. There's lots of cool new businesses popping up, and I decided to check out the latest showing at my buddy Josh's gallery down the street. Josh is a real entrepreneur, and he's a good outlet for venting. But now there's a deadline, like this is firm deadline, one month. Yeah. So you created that monster. <laughs> You're right, I did. I know. So that's good though, man. You got to yeah. give yourself something to work towards. So. Totally. I want to see things moving faster, but at the same time, I understand why they're doing it the way they're doing it. 
but the bar is kind of coming and taking shape, and it's making the space. It'll be worth yeah, it. Yeah. The, the number one thing to open in the business is uh, always giving yourself twice the amount of time, and uh, your overhead, man, is the most important thing. Yeah. Like, you go into anything thinking it's going to be $10,000 and a month worth of work, and it's going to be $30,000 in two and a half months worth of work. It's just the way it is. So, good, yeah. you know? All right, we got to make a trip to the beer store with five cases of PBR. There you go. Take it easy. Bye, guys. With my beer refinancing complete, my mind was focused on bigger issues. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you got to keep your people happy. And if you don't take care of them, then what do they, you know, what do they want to do for you? So when you keep telling people that you can't pay them, all it does is send the wrong message. So this refinance is everything because I'm completely tapped out on all my credit sources. And, um, you know, and if I don't get this refinance, then I'm going to have to look for an outside investor. And I've come so far on my own that the last thing I really want to do is have to go to somebody else at the 11th hour, show all my cards to them, and expect them to turn around with some money really quickly because then they're going to have the upper hand, you know? I just pray God that we get this done. And uh, get it done soon because people are starting to get really antsy. And I have no money for materials. So once we run out of building materials, you know, my, my, my list of unpaid, unpaid materials at my local lumber store is long. It's over a page long. And they're being really nice now, but I don't want to ruin that relationship either. So, it's got to happen, man. So far, it's been all about the bricks and mortar at the restaurant, but the time has come to think about the human element and start finding my staff. No, I want like three servers, a manager. I just finished up school uh, in the summertime. Okay. Uh, working in Niagara-on-the-Lake mostly because that's where I'm from. So I worked in the hotels down there. Yeah. Uh, went to New Zealand for a year. Um, yeah, I can see that. I want to have people that I can actually work full time. I don't want to have one night here, one night there. Like it's just. I've been in a restaurant business a long, long time. Okay. Uh, my, my wine knowledge is pretty much middle of the road across the board. You know what, if we open up and it's gangbusters like from day one, then get some more peeps, they get some more peeps you know? That's what we're shooting for. Meanwhile, the bar was starting to take shape thanks to the awesome work of our carpenter, Andreas. Outside, Q was putting the finishing touches on the exterior. T minus 28 days till opening, finishing the bar, final touches. Still don't have equipment, but uh, it's all coming. We're all excited. Still haven't really thought about food yet either, which is kind of important. For I sure. need a, I need a, I need a GM though. That's the one thing I, I have not found any GM. And people. you can't think of anybody that you worked with in the past that you know, there's a guy, might be a guy, I don't know. They're gonna kill me if I push somebody else to work out of though. It's one less worry. Like I don't have to worry so much about the kitchen. You're here because I, I trust you. Yeah. And like, look, we just have to have this this agreement where it's like I just need you to like f do it, mm -hmm. and that's it. Like we can't f around. This is my life. Yeah. No, that, we're, that we're that we're playing with, yeah. and that's it. I mean, it's serious. It's it's not a game. You know, if he's game, then then you're good. You know. The old establishments on Dundas West can be just as cool as the new ones, and Cafe Brasiliano is a great example. It's been a fixture here for years, and it's a home base for cab drivers, drawn by the friendly family that owns it and the cheap, plentiful food. This is something you, like, you get on like diners driving to the highway. <laughs> Besides filling our bellies, it was a good chance to get to know my crew better, especially Andreas. Well, check it out. In 73, my parents took off from Chile because of the uh, coup d'etat, right? They relocated in Mexico for 10 years where me and my sister were born. We already had another older sister. Then when we went back to Chile, we found out that my parents weren't allowed there at all. <laughs> so we had to, well, it took like six months, but we did. We escaped into Argentina, Argentina back to Mexico, and then here. Back at the job site, it was time to talk equipment. 
That's the that's the monthly payment. Correct. As it stands with what we have. So this is just the registration fee, two months security deposit, HST. That's the total. Plus that, plus the fee. You know what? Well, I'm gonna have to work on on the operating line attached to this account, so that should be okay. Okay. That should be good. Um, if I'm running past my twenty or thirty grand line, then I, I think got, no, then I should be. Then I got a problem. Yeah. Okay. So here's the equipment breakdown. Basically, this is just the delivery and acceptance of the equipment. Uh, now, one one thing one thing with this, if you could if you could hold this off. Yeah. yeah. That check off for a week, and then that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have to. Um, yeah, I don't have to catch this for a week. That's fine. The equipment deal needed the signature of my landlord, and I was afraid that that would become a major so issue. If, if this restaurant goes bankrupt, they can come inside the building and take the machines back. That's it. Where are you? You're outside? Where? Oh. <laughs> okay, bye. In spite of the language barrier, it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought. That's hilarious. Where are you? Are you hiding? <laughs> Okay. They need permission, so if I, let's say I, I leave and I take uh, and I lock the doors and I don't pay, they have permit, they need permission to come inside and take it. Oh, okay. That's why. Okay. okay? This is so, this is so that I, the building is mine. <laughs> okay. I gotta go talk to the plumber, yeah. see what he's doing. He's hard to nail down, this guy. Okay. Uh, listen, I need you to build these IKEA cabinets today. Done. Okay, so that we can come in and template the countertops for it. Done. I'll build them in the washroom. At this point, I was drink. worn out and ready to think about food and drink for a change. I think Alex wants to bake a cake today. I am. So maybe we'll get some dinner going, have a cake, and some beers. A whole cake, and whole some cake. beers. I need it too? I need it too. All right. Okay. I checked out a great new food shop that's part of an emerging scene in this area. It was the perfect place to stock up for my first home cooked meal at our new house. How's it going? Not too bad, how are you? Good, good, good. Are you looking for anything in particular today? Um, I, I am, I'm looking for something that kind of rings in, I guess, the fall. I, I have been cooking, you know, the start of the summery fresh stuff all, all, uh, all summer and now I need to, like the duck confit, it looks great. It's, it's mm -hmm. quick too, because it's already seven and, you don't have much time to confit duck like for dinner tonight. No, absolutely. Well, uh, the duck leg, uh, duck confit is absolutely delicious. So is the pork chop stuff with uh, braised cabbage and bacon. It, it's got braised in a little bit of uh, allspice, juniper, nutmeg, really nice and earthy. So I'll take a piece of the duck confit, and probably that stuffed okay. chop. I guess the so you're you're basically your your manifesto is right is to keep it as local as possible, right? And as seasonal and as, as possible. And as seasonal as possible. Yeah. So do you have like a ton of do you do you keep it like simple as far as your suppliers or do you have like you know twenty? Um, it's fairly simple. We deal mainly with hundred kilometer foods. Yeah. Uh, who has is a kind of amalgam of a whole bunch of farmers in and around southern Ontario. So you've got two separate glass on a beef one and a pork one. Yes, that's right. I, I, I like to, like, we gotta try the pork. If we're gonna do the chops, we should make a little a little pan sauce with that. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit of cheese. Okay. Um, what are, I, I know you got a dozen here. What, which ones are your are your favorites? I think the Avonlea cloth bound cheddar from PEI is really, really lovely. It's done in a really old school, traditional English style where it's not pressed at all. It's uh, just wrapped in cloth and left to, to uh, mature that way. Yep. So the, the uh, permeation of the air into it gives it a really rich and nice and nutty flavor almost, okay, but it'd be really crumbly as a result. I'll take 100 grams of that, that cloth brown cheddar okay. that we were just talking about. And now I need... Back at the house, it was time for Alex and I to kick back and enjoy a great meal together. Along with putting in a ton of design work for the restaurant, Alex is the host of a design show on HGTV, which means she's been working even harder than I am. Did you wrap up and put it in your pocket? Meat in a coat. This was a sample from uh, from Leo from Beretta Farms. Actually, the guy at Provenance was talking about about Beretta. They're like a really uh, a huge new player in the organic and like antibiotic free um, meat game. So 
um, hopefully we can uh, use them in Campagnolo. Okay, we have appetizers. You want me? Yeah. Olive ciabatta, plain ciabatta, water crackers, cambozzolo. What's this one again? That's a goat cheese uh, from Prince Edward County. What's this one here? And that's like a like an aged cheddar from PEI. Mm. You know, you could almost write a novel for all the things that we, <laughs> that we really have to celebrate. Um, yeah, I'd to, be thankful you know, for. To, to actually having the time to have a little dinner party in our own house, mm -hmm. to the refinance that helps the restaurant get completed, to your show, and to a long life. Great friends, to friends. And, to friends. and amazing support. Yes. Yes, we're so thankful for and, and I want to throw something in, I'd like to Cheers to Alex for being Cheers. patient it, with with my stubbornness. Just for being you. Thank you. You're you're our secret weapon. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy. Cheers. Cheers. I like to try different things when I'm cooking at home, and tonight was no exception. Berkshire pig cheek. So this is called, this is guanciale, and this literally, this is the cheek of the pig. Snout facing this way, right? So you, so you can see exhibit A, all the hair, the black hair from the Berkshire pig, which has mostly predominantly black hair. Uh, they don't quite get it all out. The skin is intact as you cure this and hung for, I don't know, this is from Grant, and he gave these to me because it's like, it's a bit hard, it's a bit overcured, so we can't serve this at the hoof. You know, his quality control is, is good, so he's giving it to me to cook with. So, I'm cutting up these pears, these local uh, Bartlett pears. That's going to be for the, uh, for the cabbage. Got the guanciale kind of rendering out, crisping up a little bit, and the sweetness of these pears. I think it's going to be really good with this uh, Savoy cabbage. One of my favorite things because it's so easy to cut, and there's so many layers. And with like a, a few simple like guys of the knife, you got really nice chiffon at. With a dish like this, I always keep the sugar pot very near so that you can kind of tweak it as you need it. Add a little bit of sugar, you know, whether it's adding a little bit more salt, uh, it's, a, it's, a fine, it's a fine balance. Cooking is finding that, that, that balance between, you know, acidity and the saltiness and the sugar. So, you know, as you're cooking, you constantly have to be casing and tweaking and tweaking. So that's what I've been doing a lot. Especially with something like this, like, you know, this braised cabbage. It's, it's not just about you know throwing the cabbage in a pan and adding a few ingredients. As it cooks down, flavors will concentrate. Some will become too intense, some won't be intense enough. But you kind of have to play chemist in the cooking. You must, be, uh, you must eat so well at your boyfriend's chef. And what do you say? <laughs> and I say, um, actually, every night he's cooking for somebody else, and I go home alone and eat cereal. <laughs> only partially cereal. Sundays. So here we have a, a Beretta Farms um, flat iron steak. So it's one of these. It's one of these sort of secondary cuts. It has a ton of flavor. You got deep muscle, but you've also you know got a relatively cheap price. So as a chef, if you know how to handle this and treat it properly, then you know you can have a really flavorful cut, and you get it at a really deep discount from your tip, from your usual ribeyes and strip loins. It's all in how you cook it and how you cut it. Really, it's as simple as that, and that's all it really takes so to make. So it's how you cook it and how you cut it. Exactly. Not exactly. what you put on it. Not what you put on it. No. Okay. Because old school would be marinating it in a ziploc for three days in your refrigerator, right? You know what? There's something that people have done in the past, and they add chemical tenderizers to this sort of thing, or they run it in a machine which perforates it and pokes holes in it. But really, that's just due to you know, like just relative. I guess inexperience or not really fully understanding how to cook a properly. So you're a purist then? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a purist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the oven. So I think as, I, as I'm finishing cooking a steak, I always like to add a little bit of fresh herbs. And then I like to baste it with butter.
It's looking pretty good. You gotta add a little wine to this. Yeah. A little more. A little more wine. But. A little Savoy cabbage in one color. There you go, we got a honey cup squash. Compliments of the guys at Provenance. Going with a little stuffed pork. This is pork? Yeah, this is a stuffed pork chop. Here's a nice, a nice steak. A little spoon to sauce the pork jus, which I'm gonna double as beef jus. Why not? You know, it's all good. A nice dark jus is good for more than just the origin of the meat it came from. See, you weren't gonna eat, and now you're enticed by the cabbage. I was enticed by the cabbage, exactly. Actually, I know you. it was the cabbage. It wasn't the beef, it wasn't the squash, it was the cabbage. Mm. Okay. One of these days, I'll be anxious about reviews for the restaurant. But for now, it's all about getting the thumbs up from Alex, my biggest fan. On the next episode, they'll be one step forward and two steps back as work continues on the reno. Things will get scary inside and out as Dundas struts its stuff and I'll put a potential cook through the paces with a hands-on interview and hopefully delicious results. Mm -hmm.